Good evening. Thank you for, for coming, for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Aaron Meckes. I am the principal here at South Christian. Uh, and I am thankful that you're all here as we spend some time uh, looking ahead to next year and thinking about classes and not only next year, but the next four years. Um, one of my favorite things about South Christian, and maybe perhaps if you've been on a tour with me, you've heard me say this, um, is that we require more electives to graduate than any other school in West Michigan. Um, I love it. I, th I think it's fantastic. And um, that's not just a decision that we just decided to make one day, uh, but rather that's a part of our mission. Our mission here is to equip students to live Christ-centered lives, important, number one, um, and two, to serve God to their greatest potential. And we think part of equipping students to their greatest potential is allowing them to explore and discover all the things that God has put on their hearts, their passions, their gifts, their talents. And we want them to discover them here. We want them to grow them here um, and learn how they might use those uh, to make the world better uh, and to honor God in all that they do. And so uh, one of, that's one of the most exciting things uh, for me here. And one of the things tonight is that we can think about um, what are the ways that my son or daughter is unique, uniquely gifted, uniquely passionate, um, maybe you see something in them that they don't even see in themselves yet, and you can direct them in a way uh, that helps them discover their gifts and things like that. But that, I, I, that is so exciting to me. And so I'm excited to spend some time thinking about that uh, tonight as you think about next year, but the next four years, um, equipping students, your sons and daughters, to live Christ-centered lives and serve God to each of their unique potentials. So I'd like to open us in prayer. Um, and I'll introduce some of the people that are here with me, and, and we'll get to it. Uh, let's pray. Father God, uh, we're grateful for uh, this day that you've made, uh, and we are grateful for the opportunity to rejoice, and we are grateful for the opportunity to honor you uh, in, in our interactions and in the things we say and do in our, in our jobs, in our lives, in our families. Uh, Father, thanks for the opportunities you've set before us each and every day. Uh, we thank you for South Christian, for, for Christian education, and for all the ways in which you um, are, are uniquely preparing each of us and each of our kids that we're thinking about uh, to serve you and to honor you in their lives. Uh, bless our evening together. Uh, we give you thanks for your grace and your mercy. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Uh, so hopefully on your way in, you grabbed a folder. Uh, if you didn't, they're out that way. Um, Rebecca, uh, I'm sorry, Dana Veldhaus and Christine Saul are out there, uh, and they're, they're happy to answer questions too uh, later on in the night when you head back out there. Um, this over here is Erica Brown. She's one of our guidance counselors, and so uh, if you'll have questions about uh, class selection, things like that, she's a great uh, um, resource. And then next to her is Mrs. Sally Brown, Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Brown. And um, Sally is our inclusion director, and so if you have specific questions, if your student has um, uh, uh, receives accommodations, has an IEP, 504, but things like that, uh, she can talk to you about the accommodations and services that are offered for academics here at the high school. Um, most of your information tonight will come from Rebecca Wieringa, who's right here. She is our registrar, and she is kind of going to run the show, and so I'm going to give her the the mic, um, and then afterwards, I'll be around. Uh, Erica and Sally are around, and we're happy to chat and answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome. It's good to see you here. I was a little worried with our um, virtual option that I was going to be speaking to an empty room, so it's great to have real people here. Um, we are recording this. If you are so captivated by what I say tonight and want to listen to it all again, uh, you will be able to listen to the recording. Um, but for those of you who are listening to this as a recording, welcome to you as well. Thanks for your flexibility and how you're getting this information. If I'm on my A-game tonight, I should have you out of here in an hour or less, all right? So you can hope for that. It's been kind of a long Monday, um, but we'll uh, see what we can do here. All right, we're going to jump right into it, and I'm going to refer to some of the handouts in your packet. Um, and in just a minute, I'm going to refer to the pink handout number six. So if you want to take a look at, um, for that, you can dig for that. But what I would like you to notice, first of all, about these graduation requirements, I just thought that we should start with the end, right? What is it that we're working towards so that we know how to start um, next year? This is our list of graduation requirements, and I'm going to talk a little bit more specifically about those. But the very first and most important thing you need to know 
is that each of these classes is taught from a Christian perspective by a fully committed Christian adult, certified teacher. And um, as Aaron said, it is one of the most exciting things we do to work with your sons and daughters to have them see who God created them to be. And so each of these classes you see listed here, what we're really trying to do is identify, all right, how does my study of English or how does my study of health or how does my study of computers fit into God's big story? And most importantly, what's my role in that? And that's really what we're about, helping your students to understand, and it's very exciting work. As you look at this list, I'll just get into the technicalities a little bit. A semester class equals a .5 credit. So when you see 3.5 credits of English, you can do the math and figure out that we require seven semesters of English, six of math, science, and social studies, and so on. This is easily achievable. Students can fit much more than this. You'll see that we require 23 credits to graduate. We have many seniors this year who will be graduating with 28, some of them even a little bit more than that. This isn't so far off from what colleges require. And I'm not gonna talk a lot about that tonight because um, it's a little bit too scary for some of you. You just, you're a little scared coming for high school information and then to think about college besides. Um, but that's what this pink sheet is about. And it gives you kind of a look ahead, for those of you who like to plan ahead, um, on what academic preparation might look for community college, trade schools, colleges, and universities. It's kind of general, but it does give you a bit of a roadmap in case you're interested in looking at that. And if this raises questions for you, you can feel free to talk with Mrs. Erica Brown um, at the end of the night. She's our guidance counselor who will be able to help answer those kinds of questions. So I have to tell you, I put a lot of time into planning this evening and thinking about you and the information that would be most helpful to you. And this is something that I work on with my students. I'm the registrar, but I also te teach a couple of English classes. I work with our seniors in the college English. And I really stress to them understanding their audience. You can't communicate well unless you know who your audience is. And so trying to practice what I preach, I think about you. And I think about those of you who are bringing me your first. And you're excited, but you're kind of nervous, and you wonder if we really know how to take care of them. <laughs> Some of you are bringing us your third or fourth or fifth, and you're tired, and you just think, get them through, please. I don't really care. <laughs> Some of you are worried if we can actually challenge your son or daughter because they're really academic and they love this stuff. Do you have enough to challenge them? And other, others of you are worried about them falling through the cracks. And we've got all kinds of situations here. Your kids are so unique. Their needs are unique, and I know I need to speak to all of those, and it's tricky. So understand that what you're hearing tonight is the best information for the most of you. Is it going to make all of you happy? Probably not. You're probably going to have some questions, and some of you are going to think, that was overkill. She could have done that in 20 minutes, and we could have been out of there. The people who are listening to the recording, I guess you have the advantage of fast-forwarding me, which is nice. <laughs> Um, so I know that this isn't going to hit everybody's needs, and we will certainly try to answer questions at the end. So here we go with my best attempt to give you the information that I think you're going to need. It might be helpful to you in your packets to look at the yellow four-year plan. <clears throat> and for people who are accessing this online, this is labeled as document number one. This is the list of graduation requirements that I just showed you on the previous slide laid out two different ways, okay? And this is, um, some of these ways just work better for other people in the way that you take in information. So on the top of this four-year plan, you can see our graduation requirements laid out year by year in a very typical way that kids move through here in four years. At the bottom, you can see them laid out in grid form. Now, you never have to look at this again if you don't want to. If this is not helpful and it's kind of stressful to you, you don't have to keep track of it. It's just meant as a reference. Um, some of you, though, I know you like to look ahead and you like to think about options and you think, okay, they suggested this, but I wonder what would happen if we move this. And it can show you what the ripple effects are of various moves if you kind of want to play around with this a little bit. I do understand that this can be kind of overwhelming, so again, don't feel that you have to keep track of this. 
The counselors and I run a credit audit every year and we are watching your students' credits um, carefully. We're making sure that they don't go off on some wonky trail and they're not gonna graduate, right? We, we take good care of that. But if this is helpful to you, that might be a good reference point. All right, for this next slide here, um, this goes along with the green freshman course selection sheets, and these are marked as document number two. We gave you two copies of this because we were thinking that one of them could be your working copy, and then one of them could be the one that you'll hand in to us eventually. So that's why you have two of those. And this is what we're working toward tonight. This is our goal. I hope by the time you walk out of here tonight, you are very clear on the things you need to talk about with your son and daughter and on how to fill in this sheet. So this is what we're working toward. What I'd like you to notice at the bottom of that green sheet is a little chart that has 14 spaces. Our semesters, or sorry, our days are made up of seven hour days. And so your student will take seven classes one semester, seven classes another semester. And so this little chart is you telling me the 14 pieces that make up your son or daughter's little puzzle, all right? You don't have to worry about how it fits together. Well, what do they take first and what do they take second? That's my job, that's what I work on during the summer is getting this to work for all of our kids here. I don't want you to misunderstand. I know sometimes looking at a chart with two columns, you look at that first column and you think, oh, that must be what they take first semester and then they take the other stuff second. It doesn't really work that way. This also is not first hour, second hour, third hour. So don't read this as an actual schedule. This is just collecting the information, okay? So let's take a little bit of time uh, walking down these. You'll see on the first line that we have two English classes. Your freshmen take a semester of literature, a semester of composition. The order of those doesn't matter. Half of them will get one first, the other half will take the other, and then they switch at the semester, okay? The same thing happens with physical science. One of the physical science semesters is more chemistry focused, the other one is more physics focused. The order does not matter. They just get one first and then they do the other. You'll see that math takes up a whole line because that happens all year long. So whatever math they start in, they take for two semesters. And we really rely on your students' middle school math teachers to help us with this. So they are working on making recommendations. I'm getting emails from them actually this week on what they're recommending for math placements. But generally speaking, you see we have three options there for freshmen. If your son or daughter is taking Algebra One right now and that's going really well and he or she is having success, we're going to put them in advanced geometry. If your son or daughter is doing a pre-algebra or a transitions type math, then they will take algebra here next year. And if your son or daughter is just not ready yet for algebra one, then we're going to do the introduction to algebra. Now, if you are here for a second or third or fourth kid and you've been through this before and you're thinking, where's that foundations class? Our math department changed things a little bit. We're not doing the foundations class anymore. We've replaced it with the intro to algebra class. Okay, so that's the math placement. And um, like I said, we'll be working with the middle school teachers on recommendations for that. Under the math, you will see that we, we require a semester of freshman PE and a semester of health. Our PE department has a new um, approach to freshman PE this year, and it's kind of exciting. We used to have one class called Foundations of Wellness, all the freshmen had to take it. They would like to offer your freshmen more choice. And so you will see there that your freshmen can choose between the Intro to Strength class or the Sports and Wellness class. Now those classes both have a little bit of each other in them, and so they'll get it all somehow. It's just what do they focus most on? So the Intro to Strength is exactly what it sounds like. It's a strength and conditioning class. They're gonna spend most of their time in the weight room working on learning um, strength training, okay? Proper technique, safety, um, responsibility, and that kind of thing. That's a great choice, especially for those of you who have um, students who plan to be athletes. A lot of our coaches do require strength workouts as part of their training. And um, in that intro to strength class, they're gonna work on the workouts that the coaches need. Okay, so they have to learn some of the foundations first. 
um, but they'll be working working with um, coachman training and and getting the right workouts in for their sport. They will spend maybe a day or so a week doing some sports and just some activity things. The sports and wellness is exactly the opposite. That's mostly learning about different sports, learning the rules, the techniques, the skills involved, playing the games um, most of the days, and then maybe one day a week, they will be in the weight room working on some strength training, okay? So either one of those, whatever their preference is, but they do need to have one semester of that. Semester of health, as I said, and then also a semester of Old Testament. And then you will see, if you're looking at the slide, they're green. If you're looking at your green sheet, they're actually gray, but you will see those um, blank spaces, and that's what we're headed toward next. How do you fill in those blank spaces? So I think what might be helpful to you, keep your green sheets handy, because we're gonna go back to those, but in your packet, you also have a purple sheet called Course Selection Talking Points. It's labeled as number three. And this is a tool we've designed for you to take home and talk to your son or daughter about the decisions you need to make. Now, I know you sit here tonight and you think, talk about it. I know what she's taking. I can fill it out right now and hand it in. No, <laughs> we really want you to include them in the conversation. This is a great time to teach them to start taking ownership of their learning, to be part of the decision making. Um, we know you pay the bills and you have the final say in the end, but we would really love for this to be a conversation. And if you look at this, see how easy this is? Those of you who came in really nervous, you can't mess this up, right? Like, this is, this is no problem, we can do this. So let's take a look at decision number one, the fine arts requirement. Your son or daughter has to do two semesters of some sort of fine arts here. And you will see on the slide there what the choices are. He or she may be in band, choir, orchestra, or art. Okay, two semesters of any one of those will satisfy this requirement. For the band, freshmen are in what's called our concert band, and for the first nine weeks, that will include marching. Okay, so they will be part of the marching band for the first nine weeks, um, which the kids had a great time with this year. And then the rest of the year would be concert band. Now, I know some of you are looking at this and you're wondering, okay, my kid loves music. Is it possible to do an instrumental music and a vocal music, both of them, for all four years? The answer is yes, that is possible. You are probably not leaving yourself much room for choosing other electives, but if that's your choice, if that's what they love and that's how they want to grow, absolutely. You may pursue both an instrumental and a vocal music for four years. Just know that it's probably not gonna leave you much room for other electives. Unfortunately, it is not advisable to do both an instrumental and a vocal and Spanish for four years, okay? So for those of you who are looking at this thinking, oh, I really wanted to do band and choir and Spanish, we don't advise that. We advise that you choose two of the three. I'm gonna talk to you more about Spanish in just a minute. But here's the thing, if you look at that four-year plan, some of you are gonna do the pencil pushing and you're gonna say, no, it works, there are enough spaces, I can get this to all fit, and you're right. There are enough spaces to do vocal and instrumental and Spanish all four years. But you have to shuffle things around in such a way that you push off a bunch of our classes that are really intended to prepare your kids for the ACT and the SAT and they don't have them and then they have to take those tests and they haven't had the, the, the teaching that they need, okay? They also get behind on getting prerequisites in the right order if they would like to take AP classes down the road. So that is why it's not advisable. Technically, there are enough spaces, but it just doesn't work that well, okay? So probably you're gonna have to choose two of those three things. All right, back to the fine arts requirement. Um, if your student chooses art, they need to start with intro art, and then there's another semester of art that they may take either as a freshman or down the road. Um, they may save that for a couple of years later if they would like to do it that way instead. Um, we require two semesters of this, but we would love to see your kids participate in way more than that. We're really proud of our arts programs here. We have such great stuff going on in all of these rooms, and we would love to see you make room for this in your child's schedule. 
um, for the next four years. So give it a start with two semesters and then see if you can continue. All right, next decision, Spanish. We're gonna get hung up here for a little while because this is the trickiest one. This is probably the most complicated decision for some of you. Um, and it's a little bit complicated for us just because there's not a super clear way to answer your questions on this. I'm gonna be really careful about what I say for two reasons. I know this touches on a nerve for some of you and what has happened in your schools or what hasn't happened. Um, but it's also just really dependent on your kids. I had two kids attend South Christian. My daughter took two years of language here, ended up doing a year in college. That was great for her. She thrived. My son took four years here, tested out of language, and went to a different college, and that was great for him. Okay, so it really is dependent on what your son or daughter needs and how they're wired. And so to that end, when you are first deciding are we gonna do Spanish as a ninth grader or not? The Spanish department said, have the parents ask these three questions. And so if you wanna scribble these down just as little reminders for your talking points, maybe that's helpful. I don't know um, if you wanna talk this through with your son or daughter. But they said, ask three questions. Are they excited? Not are you excited for them to do it. Are they excited to take Spanish? If they're excited about it, that's probably a good reason to pursue it as a ninth grader. How about their reading and writing ability? You know how this journey has gone for them up until this point. Has that been pretty bumpy in the reading and writing area? If so, they may benefit from waiting a year or two, or maybe they don't do it all. Spanish is not a graduation requirement for us, okay? How about memorization? Does that come easily to them? If yes, maybe Spanish is a good choice. If not, if that's gonna be a ton of work for them, maybe waiting a little bit would be better. Okay, so work through those three questions just to decide if this is even the right thing, <coughs> Spanish yes or no, for ninth grade. <coughs> Once we've made that decision, then we have to look at which level. Okay, we have a Spanish one, or we could put them in Spanish two, or we have a one-two combo. So let me say a little bit about this. And I hate to single out particular middle schools, but these are the facts, people. Um, so here we go. Byron Center Christian has been very intentional about aligning their middle school curriculum with our Spanish One course. This means that it is possible for most of the Byron Center Christian students to take Spanish too as ninth graders. Byron Center Christian parents, if you're wondering please talk to your Spanish teacher. I know that she's working on making those recommendations and doing those kinds of assessments, but um, it's pretty certain that your student is ready to start in Spanish too. <clears throat> For those of you at other middle schools, your curriculum just isn't as aligned with ours. The kids have a really hard time jumping into Spanish too because there's just a lot that they haven't had. They also have not devoted as much time, and so they're just not quite there yet. All right, so probably if your student is at a different school, um, it would be best for them to start with Spanish one. Now, if you think your student is an exception to either of those things, I would love to talk to you about that. I'll put you in touch with our Spanish department. You can do some chatting with them, placement testing if you feel like you need that, um, but we would ha be happy to give you more information on that. I do think this option for next year is kind of cool, this one, two blend. So what's that about? It's meant for kids who really aren't ready to begin Spanish 2, but they can move through Spanish 1 a lot quicker than kids who are just starting it. It's also meant for kids who really love to be challenged. Like, bring it on. I want to move fast, and I want to get through this 1-2 in one year. And the reason that um, we offer this is for both of those um, situations, but also this does set kids up with the possibility of being able to take AP Spanish as seniors. So they would do the one, two as freshmen, then three and four, sophomore, junior, and then AP Spanish as seniors, okay? So if that is a goal of yours and you think your student might be able to handle this, we'd love to talk to you about that. And again, I can put you in touch with the Spanish teachers if you would like um, more information on that. Now, some of you sit here and think, okay, well, if Spanish isn't required at South Christian, what about the whole college thing? And I'm going to invite Erica Brown to talk about that. Uh, 
All right, I would um, ask to have just a couple minutes here to talk about this, because this is a question we get um, a lot in the guidance office. And um, this sheet right here will be a very, very good reference, this pink sheet number six. Um, I just, I think it's super, super important to look at your child as a whole. Uh, what the Spanish department actually provided us with for this presentation about those three questions, I think just hit the nail right on the head. I really would like for you to um, talk about that with your son or daughter and just see, right, and how has eighth grade gone and how are they feeling about coming into ninth grade, into high school, into that whole new experience. The whole child needs to be looked at in this. Just because they come in and they don't take Spanish one for freshman year, because maybe they do need that year of transition and growth, it does not mean they're behind. If you look at this pink sheet, this academic prep chart sheet, you'll see that community colleges and trade schools, it's just talked about and recommended. It's a good thing to have it just two years. If you look at the college and university recommendations, it's two to four. So if your student wants that transition year to maybe grow and maybe to experience high school and maybe they're, they're whatever it is they might be worrying, right? You think of the whole child, the mind, the body, the spirit, right? The mind, are they excited, right? Are they good at reading and writing and memorizing, right? And then you think of the body. Are they anxious? Are they worried about high school? Or do they think they got it? It's super important to go through all of that. But as this says, two to four years of a language, if you start your sophomore year, you got three years right there. The other thing to really keep in mind is, is colleges don't just take the transcript when you apply and immediately go to see how many foreign year languages that you took. They just don't do that. There's so much more included in that college process that's super important to hold, um, like hold important and talk about with your child. And that's their GPA over their four years. So why not start out that freshman year and start out those study habits and those skills and really start with a good GPA because that will only increase as you go. The other things are your community involvement. Um, they look at the how you've been involved and what leadership roles that you've had over the course of your high school. Okay, and then you have recommendation letters that are included in there. You have test scores that are included in there. So there are so many more things outside of getting hooked up on that foreign language um, that I want you guys to know and to hopefully it kind of helps as you go through and make that decision because there's not a lot of room in that ninth grade year. And we want that ninth grade year to be super exciting and super fun and a very good transition year to set the, set the mode for their journey through high school. So that's the little plug I wanted to give to you. If you have more questions about that, I would love to chat with you um, after tonight so you can find me and ask me more specific questions. Um, but hopefully this chart is a good reference for you guys. The one thing on here, there is an oopsie. So on the bottom, that very first bullet point where it says students seeking admissions to highly competitive colleges, it does say four years. It meant to be 2-4. Okay, so <laughs> Don't freak out if you go home and you read that and then you're like, Mrs. Brown said this. It's supposed to be two to four years. So we apologize for that little, that little mess up, so. All right, thank you. Okay, they won't all take this long. We'll move along now. So we've covered fine arts. We've covered foreign language. Next question on your talking points sheet. Do we need a study hall? I know that some of you say, no way, I am not paying for that, and that is perfectly fine. Load your kid up with classes. We love that. But sometimes um, they benefit from a study hall in a particular semester. Sometimes parents like to choose this based on when they think their student is busy. Oh, this is their season. I know they're crazy busy. They would really benefit from having a study hall. You will need to specify whether you want a first semester study hall or a second because I schedule them by the semester. So don't say, eh, just give me one wherever. You do have to choose one or the other. If your student is somebody who needs a study hall every day of every semester they're here, they will be just fine on credits. I don't want you to worry and think, oh, they'll never graduate if they take study hall their whole four years. They'll be fine. If that is what they need, build in that study hall time of day. I will tell you this, if you're on the fence, my recommendation to you would be load up with classes and do not put a study hall in. And the reason for that is you have the first nine weeks of a semester to drop from a class into a study hall. 
So if you get five or six weeks in and your son or daughter is just super stressed, no problem. They come and get a drop slip from my office. We figure out what class does it make sense to drop, and then we put the study hall in. If you do the opposite, we get a little bit more stuck. So let's say you schedule the study hall. They get about three weeks in, and they're like, oh, they're so bored. They don't have anything to do. Could you please get them in a class? Well, now the classes are going. They don't like to change their schedule. I might not have anything for that hour available for freshmen. You see how it gets a little trickier? So if you are on the fence at all, like I just don't know whether they need a study hall, we would say load them with classes. We can always drop to a study hall, very easy. The other thing I do wanna mention, I had a couple of ninth grade parents tell me um, that I needed to remind you, we have something called common time two days a week. And that's about a 20 or 25 minute period where it's kind of like the, the whole school's on pause. The students are assigned to a room but we're not doing teaching. It's just a time to work and to take care of business. So they might go visit their counselor during common time. They might come and see me in the registrar's office during common time. They might use it as a study hall. And I've had a few parents say, you know, that was just what my student needed. Those two common times were enough time in the day. Um, and I thought, oh, that was good advice. I didn't have kids here with a common time schedule, so I thought I would pass that on to you. So. Study hall is your next decision to make. Okay, now I'm gonna bring us back here to the screen sheet because probably once you have decided on these three things, we've got these spaces filled in, all right? Remember the fine arts is gonna take up two spaces probably unless they're just doing intro art. Whether you do Spanish or not will take up two spaces or not and then the study hall. All right, so a lot of times those will fill this up and you're thinking, wow, that really is easy. You can't go wrong. We got it figured out. Remember, you still have to talk to your son or daughter. Um, some of you, though, are looking at this and you think, oh, I choose, chose too many things. There's not enough room or I still have space left or I, I would like to hear a little bit more. So let's look then um, at the options. So in the middle of your green sheet there, you'll see we have three columns. These are all of the options open to freshmen. The column over on the left side are the full year courses, and basically I've talked about all of those things. If you choose anything from there, you have to allow two spaces for it, because there's a first semester and a second semester of it. As you look to the middle column, these are now one semester electives that your student could consider. So you have um, our art classes listed in the, the top middle there. As I said before, they need to start with intro art, if they would like to take a second art class, they can choose ceramics and sculpture, or drawing and painting, or graphic design and printmaking. Any of those three will satisfy that fine arts requirement. And they may do any of those after they've done the intro art. The next block of classes are our computer classes. We do have a computer tech requirement. They have to do one semester of something from that block. All right, and we do highly recommend, if there's space left in your freshman schedule, we do recommend putting this in the freshman year. It's, it is very helpful um, for your students in their other classes. So um, you can find more information about these by going to the curriculum guide, and I'll tell you how to find that. We have course descriptions in there, but I'll just give you kind of a, a quick overview as you look at the list. Digital design is probably the most popular one with the freshmen. It's, kind of the broad strokes of lots of things. They learn about documents and spreadsheets and slides and presentations and that kind of thing. So a little bit of everything. Computer science is just what it sounds like. It's more into the coding and that kind of thing. And the exciting thing, um, we have a new class. You'll probably notice that I skipped the first one. We have an AP class available to freshmen. This is the only AP class available to freshmen. AP is advanced placement, for those of you who are not familiar with that. But if your son or daughter is really into coding and computer science stuff, they would start by taking the 264 class and then they could take the AP computer science class second semester. Digital photography gets a tech credit, but it does require intro art as a prerequisite. It's kind of an art tech blend. So they need to start by taking intro art, but then they may take digital photography and that does satisfy their tech requirement. And then we also have engineering graphics one and two. You'll notice that we have foods and sewing available in there. 
Um, we love to see your kids explore different areas. I know when my daughter was here, she took sewing and she was so good at it. She even made me a skirt. It was fabulous. Um, and I loved it and she loved it and she's still sewing to this day. So great way to explore some new um, skills. In the bottom section there, you will see our industrial arts classes. I'll tell you, these are wildly popular. You've probably seen our campaign for a new shop. We've already outgrown our shop. Um, these classes are full every hour of the day and every class has a waiting list to get into it. They are just wildly popular. And so um, you would need to start out by taking intro. I can't promise that everybody who signs up for it is gonna get into it, but we are certainly gonna do our best to make that happen. So your son or daughter would need to start with the intro class after the intro class, they may take woods tech or metals tech. Those come after intro. House repairs is kind of like its own intro class. You can just take house repairs as a standalone. It doesn't get you ready for the other ones. If you want to go on to metals or woods, you have to do the intro. But if they just want to do house repairs, or if you would like them to do house repairs to help you out a little bit, um, that's a great choice. Over on the right side there, you'll see that we have two English elective classes. Contemporary Voices is a contemporary literature, creative writing blend course, and Dramatic Arts is um, tied in with our drama department. They work on performance pieces. Um, you will see that we have some PE electives. So the Advanced Strength class is kind of a continuation of that intro strength class that I told you about earlier. So this is after you've done the freshman PE, if you want to keep doing workouts and have a lot of time in the weight room, that would be for that advanced strength and that will be a co-ed class. We have a dance and fitness class. We do have a female only strength and conditioning class. They do some time in the weight room, but that is a lot more time with other kinds of fitness. Um, our teacher is awesome about doing total wellness, emotional fitness, spiritual fitness. Um, it's a really important class for a lot of girls who take it. And I try my best to schedule that last hour of the day because these girls love a good workout, but they don't want to go back to class afterwards. They just want to go home. So <laughs> we try to put that last hour. Team sports is another fun elective. I will tell you that team sports tends to attract a lot of junior and senior boys. And every once in a while we get freshman girls in there and <laughs> they're so scared, or some of them are purely delighted um, that they are in there with all of these uh, junior and senior boys. So just know uh, that that tends to be the trend. Who knows what's gonna happen next year, but heads up. Um, introduction to Christianity is really intended for our international students who come to us with very little background um, in the Bible or um, in the Christian faith, so that probably isn't gonna apply to many of you. And then, of course, you see the study halls on there as well. So those are your options. All right, some of you have everything you need to know and you think, whew, good, I'm done, I could leave. Others of you are like, eh, but you didn't talk about this yet. And so this is going to be the part where I'm going to give some of you permission to just zone out. I'll call you back, but if you're on overload, uh, you can zone out about right now. And this is kind of intended for people who are wanting to hear a little bit more about some other things that we uh, offer. So I'm going to talk about um, course exemptions here, and then I'm going to ask for some help from Sally and Erica to talk about some of these other things. Course exemptions, we do coordinate with our other South Suburban Christian schools. And so likely if your student is at one of those schools, they're not gonna be ready for an exemption because we've coordinated our curriculum and they're just not ready to exempt out of something. But if you're sitting here, your son or daughter is at a different school and you think physical science, I'm pretty sure she's already done that. I wonder if they, we could test out or exempt out of that. We do have a way for you to do that. And I would just encourage you to contact me for that. I'm gonna let Sally talk to you about our educational support services. Hello, so for ed support services, any of the students that have um, support at the middle schools can get support here at South. And we get together with the middle school um, ESS teachers, usually around spring break to talk about the students on their caseload that will be coming here. And then we decide together um, 
would they fit more in inclusive ed, which is uh, my room, room 212, and I have another teacher, Heather Motter, in there, and we have a couple para pros. Or they have a like resource or guided study hall for students that need less support. Maybe they just need extra time or something read to them or um, help on some homework. So for inclusive ed, I have a wide variety of students that are on um, my caseload from high anxiety to learning disabilities to um, Down syndrome or autism. So if a student needs just that extra support, they, they let me bring my little dog, so sometimes kids just need their dog fix, or a quiet room versus a study, uh, the regular study hall, they need more of a quiet study hall, or just that connection with an adult, um, they would be more on my caseload. I, I pre-schedule the students, so I work with Mrs. Wieringa over the summer or before um, each semester so that I'm sure that we have um, a para or a support person either in the class or really tracking closely with what's required in the different classes. So sometimes we will modify work if a student needs modifications or we'll accommodate the test. Um, we can talk about more what that would look like or they take the test in our room. And the same thing can happen with Mrs. Sigma study hall as far as taking the test in her room or having somebody um, read it with them. So we, and also like I know for, for the, for everybody, it, high school can seem terrifying. And I know for parents who have students who need extra support, it's all the more terrifying. So we have you, we will work with you. You can contact me anytime. You can email me tomorrow and we can set up a meeting. I just really want you and your student to be as comfortable as possible coming to high school. And if we need to meet over the summer and walk the halls and figure out where your classes are, I live really close. I'm happy to do that. So we, I just want you to know, like, we will work closely together to make sure your student is really supported. Also, we, we need you both. And if you have a student who is going to receive support, we need them to have a study hall because that's when we are going to do extra time. If they need extra time for a test or extra time for assignments, we're going to work with them during that time. Also, um, please don't take Spanish yet. Like, let's just wait and see how, how it goes. There are so many changes. Just size alone for some of our kids is such a big change. And new, new students that they don't know yet or are just barely familiar with. So we just want to come in easy, make sure we have a study hall, make sure they're well supported, and um, then we'll move from there. If, if things are going really well, they can move out to a less supportive if they start with inclusive ed, they could move over to the resource study hall, and then if they're really doing great, they could move out altogether. And that does happen sometimes, but we wanna start them well supported to give them the best chance that they can to have a really great experience. Okay, the next four on here, um, honors, AP, college credit, KCCC programs, these are on here just to kind of highlight what is some really cool things that your son or daughter um, can take advantage of, they can challenge themselves with, um, get involved in uh, while they're here um, at South Christian. So the honors classes, this is something they can opt into next fall during the first week or two of school. Um, they'll hear about it from their individual teachers and um, you can read more about those options in the curriculum guide, or if you have questions, you can see um, us after. Advanced placement classes are for students who are looking for a challenge and the opportunity to earn some college credit. Um, we offer one that is open to freshmen, like Mrs. Wieringa said, um, and the other ones begin um, sophomore year. And I believe with that new freshman class, we are up to 10 AP classes here at South, which is pretty cool. Um, the thing with the AP level courses, uh, very rigorous, very challenging, and then we encourage the student to take the AP exam in the spring um, to get a qualifying score so that they can take some credit into college. Uh, but again, we will talk a lot about that with your students as they go through the years and they're thinking about maybe challenging or going in those directions. Um, college credit, um, just piggybacking off of AP and the avail availability to get the college credit, we also offer um, opportunities like dual enrollment, and then we also have concurrent enrollment, which is a pretty cool uh, program. Some of the colleges around the area, Calvin and 
Grace are the two that have partnered with South um, so that a student who is taking a South Christian class and they do well per the eligibility, they actually walk away with college credit um, at Calvin and um, Grace just by doing well in our class here at South. And then dual enrollment is an opportunity where the student can actually, if there's elective spots open, they can um, sign up and take a class at like GRCC, the state pays for it, uh, and then they can actually see what it's like to take a college credit while still in high school. And so those are free college credits as well. So that's kind of down the road a ways. That's more your junior, senior year, but we wanted to let you know that those opportunities are there uh, for them and that they will be very well taken care of when um, going through scheduling. We will talk about those things um, and with you as well as they go. And then KCTC is also a really, really neat program. This is not available until you're a junior or senior, uh, but this is more of like a hands-on program. So if you have a student who's really interested in diesel, um, or automotive tech. They have those type programs. There's an intro to health careers out there. Um, there's business and IT. Uh, lots of really neat programs out at KCTC. Um, not for everybody, but for some kids, it's exactly what they need, and they find their path. Um, but that starts again junior, senior year, junior, senior years of high school. Um, so as a sophomore, we really start talking about those options um, to see if that's something that they're interested in doing. So those were just some other things that we wanted to to make light of tonight to let you know that they'll be getting um, opportunities to pursue here in high school. And we do have some online classes available. I know some of you coming out of the pandemic, you think no way, no more online classes, but um, we do have things available to fulfill unique requests. Mostly these happen in junior and senior years. We have found that they're not super successful with our freshmen, but if it's important to you, we would certainly consider that. Um, we would put a student in an online class if they're really interested in something and we just don't offer it. Um, so we have some kids right now, it was really important to them to take American Sign Language and they're doing that through an online class. One of the funnier requests I got just recently, um, we have a senior who's going to college next year and she's going to be starting an agri-science program she said, hey, Mrs. Weeringa, I found a livestock and poultry class online. <laughs> is there even such a thing? Yes, there is. So she's taking that because that meets her needs. So um, down the road, if there's something that you might be interested with an online class, let us know that. All right, what's next? We're in the last phases here. Um, we would like you to go home and talk with your sons and daughters. Have conversations about this include them in these conversations so that they can feel like they're part of the decision making. That's a really important step. And um, work toward completing that green course selection sheet. If you don't understand how all of your decisions end up on the green sheet and all you can do is fill in the purple sheet, that is just fine. We will help you fill in the green sheet. We know that we threw a lot of information at you tonight and we know you're gonna leave here with questions. And so this screaming orange sheet in your packet uh, number four, uh, you will notice that there's some contact information up at the top of that. My information is there. Um, the counselor's information is there. It might be best for you to email Erica directly as she is going to be the counselor working with the ninth graders next year. Um, you're welcome to email Mrs. Muller if you have a relationship with her, but um, Mrs. Brown will be the one working with the ninth graders. There's not a dumb question. Okay, we really want you to feel good about these decisions. We want your son or daughter to feel comfortable coming here, as comfortable as they can. And so please don't hesitate if there's something that we can be helpful. All right, these are some important dates for you. We will be coming to the schools on these dates at these times to pick up these green forms. All right, so. For Legacy, we'll be coming on Monday the 14th at precisely 12.07. Um, we are also going to head out to Moline that day. We'll be there about 1.45. Byron Center Christian, we're coming to you on Tuesday the 15th at 1.25. Dutton Christian, Wednesday the 16th at 12.35. Our Cross Creek neighbors will be... Hopping over to you on Wednesday the 23rd at 1 o'clock. And if your school is not one of those, I would love to set up an appointment with you and we'll take those individually. Okay, so go ahead and contact me when you are ready to do that. Our office staff is going to send a reminder, by the way, the day before. 
that we're coming and they'll remind you of what papers you need to send to school. And we'll have extras in case you forget. All right, the next thing I would like to talk to you about, what do you have to have ready for that visit? The green sheet that we just spent a lot of time on, but then you also have this blue sheet in your packet. It says, welcome sailor, it's labeled as sheet number five. This is another important one for us to get on the day that we come to visit with you or when we have an appointment with you. This lists all of our extracurricular activities. It also lists our athletic opportunities. And it's a really important one for your students to express interest, okay? So please have them check anything they're interested in. And don't freak out if there's lots of checks on there. It is not a commitment. They haven't just overcommitted themselves and you're not driving everywhere all of the time. It's just telling us, hey, I would like some more information about this. It's very important for our coaches, especially our coaches who run summer camps and our coaches who do fall sports. This is how we get you in the system so that we can contact you and make sure that you're included in the conditioning workouts and whatever information these coaches have for the summer. We would really like to encourage your students to get involved somehow in the fall. Our kids who have the easiest transitions are those who choose to do something here and get involved. And one thing that takes a lot of people by surprise is the play. So you're gonna see up on the top there under their extracurricular activities in the middle column, dramatics. We have a fall play that has just loads of opportunities for your kids to get involved. And so kids who aren't athletes or they don't really know where they belong, I would encourage them to think about that. They can help build the sets. They can work on hair and makeup. They can be part of the stage crew. They can be part of lights and sound. They can be part of advertising. Okay, so that is a really cool opportunity and people just don't think a lot of times about all of the options there. So um, don't mean to highlight any one activity, but that is one that, that kind of surprises people. You do have a physical form in your folder um, it's labeled MHSAA. They are very specific about the form they need. They need this exact form, or if you lose this one, you'll print off another one just like it from our website. Um, you do not need to have this ready for us when we come. This is meant for um, later, all right? So they'll bring this when they come for a physical, or they'll bring this before they start a sport next fall. But you, we give it to you ahead of time so that you're ready. If you're gonna go to your um, family doctor, you've got it all set to go, but you do not have to have that ready for us when we come for the visit. All right, couple of other things here. How do we communicate with parents? For those of you who are new here, um, you're already part of our um, email list for our publications for the South Scenes, which is monthly. The highlights comes out maybe three or four times a year. We use a parent portal, which will have great information. So you can sign up for weekly grade reports if you want. You can look into the, um, the grade books and see how your kids are doing in their classes. You'll get information about that next fall, how you sign up for that. All teachers here use Google Classroom as our classroom management system. I think we're really familiar with that now um, after the last couple of years that we've been through. So that's how we communicate with our students. We put materials on there. Um, sometimes they do quizzes or labs or whatever on there. Parent accounts are also available and we will give you more information on that in the fall. And then of course email is our primary method of communication. So if you haven't been hearing from us, it would be really good just to check the email address that we have on the green sheet and make sure that's correct. And if we have a mistake on there, um, let Dana or Chris know before you leave tonight. All right, I have referenced a couple of times the curriculum guide, and it's a great source of information, but it's a little tricky to find. So I just wanted to show you our website and how you find this. So you'll get to this page by clicking on current parents, and that will bring you to this page. And you'll notice there's some gray tabs across the top. I highly recommend reading the weekly announcements. They will get emailed to you. They are also emailed to the students every week but they're a great source of information. Um, for those of you who are bringing us, or are sending us a boy, uh, teenage boys are not the best source of accurate information all of the time. <laughs> so um, I have had a lot of moms of boys say, whew, it's a good thing I read those announcements because I get mostly grunts and growls at, at home and not much more than that. So um, you'll wanna check out those weekly announcements. 
You'll also see on the green buttons there, we've got more stuff there for you to read than you probably care to think about. But um, the curriculum guide over there on the right side that says 2122, uh, we have now updated that for next year. That has course descriptions in it. It has all the information about the honors classes. A lot of the things we referred to tonight are in that curriculum guide. And then the parent student handbook may also be interesting to you. So those are a couple of other things that you might like to read. I will tell you that we're working on a new website, so just about the time you figure out how to find stuff on here, we're probably going to switch it up on you. We're rolling that out later this spring, so you can watch for that. All right, other important dates for those of you who are planners and like to get this stuff on your calendar. Enrollment happens online. We will send out the information for that after our society meeting, which is scheduled for May 4, and those are due back before May 31. Sports physicals, you can plan, we think, <laughs> David Cool says, hedge a little bit, but we really have every intention of hoping these happen this year. On Monday, May 2, from 6.30 to 8.30, we will be offering physicals. Any student who plans to be an athlete here has to have a physical, and they have to have that MHSAA form filled out. It's a state thing, it is not ours, um, and so it's gotta be that exact form, all right? This is a really good physical, it's $20. Um, you don't have to feel like this is weird or anything. It's a, a quality physical that we have um, constituents who help us with and, and we work with Spectrum on this. And so we encourage you to do this. If you would rather go to your family doctor to get this physical, that's fine, but make the appointment after April 15. If the date is before that, it doesn't count, okay? So this physical form has to be filled out after April 15. Um, we are possibly gonna schedule a physical night on Monday, August 1, not positive about that. David said, put it up there, tell them it's tentative, all right? Schedules, if I have a good run on building the schedule this spring, they usually get emailed sometime mid-summer, so middle to end of July is kind of what I like to suggest. Um, and apparently they cause a flurry of activity, like people are camping and all of a sudden they got to check their email. I always wish I could be a fly on the wall and watch this because I just hit send on my end. And <laughs> apparently it's a big deal. Uh, sports tryouts and practices. Those begin Monday, August 8 for all fall sports. We've sometimes had a staggered start where it's just football first and then everything else. And David told me this year, everybody's on August 8th. Some of you who are first time parents are like, seriously, that's still the summer. Do I have to be back? Yes, you do. Your summer is over probably <laughs> at that point, okay? It's really important that your kids are here um, for their safety, um, you know, for the coaches to get to know them, for the tryouts and that kind of thing. So um, plan on that date, Monday, August 8th. Mr. Cool wanted me to pass along to you that um, Based on this year's information, freshman volleyball and soccer were the only freshman sports with cuts. All other freshman sports, if your student wants to play, they'll be on the team um, based on what happened this year, all right? Um, if you don't hear a, from a coach about start dates, please give us a call. The office staff does work through the summer and so we can help you with those things. And um, we also have good information on southchristiansports.com, our website, and Mr. Cool loves um, emails and phone calls too. If you have questions, feel free to contact him directly. And then finally, freshman orientation is going to be Monday, August 22. That's our first day of school. We have the freshmen come first in the morning and they go through their schedule and we do some orientation things with them and they just get a sense of the building before all of the bigger kids get here. And so they'll come in the morning and then in the afternoon, the entire school body comes and then the freshmen all go, um, we move them around in groups by grades and so they get their Chromebooks and they get their photo IDs taken and we handle a bunch of business, okay? So that first day of school is pretty important. Make sure you mark that one on your calendars as well. All right, that's everything, it's a lot. Thanks for taking the time to be here. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this. You are about to begin a really exciting and important phase of life. 
Those of us who spend our days here are committed to this. We just believe in this high school and we believe in what high school does to develop your, your son or daughter. You're gonna love who they become after four years here. And I can tell you that as a parent of some kids who have been through it. Know that we are already praying for your son and daughter and know that we're praying for you. I know this is hard for some of you. There's a lot to think about. It's nerve wracking. You wonder a lot, you worry a lot. And so we are already covering you and your families in prayer. Know that you don't do this alone. We're eager to partner with you. We are happy to answer your questions or to assist you in whatever way we can. So please let us know if we can be of any help. Thanks for coming. Drive safely. And we'll see you soon.